Welcome back guys. So this is part seven of the series that we're doing in ray tracing, building a ray tracer in Rust. Uh, this may be the last video, we'll see how we go. So uh, over the last couple of days, we've kind of got through the last few sections here. Today, what we're gonna do is look at uh, 11 and 12. Uh, so if you're following along, ray tracing in one weekend is the tutorial. Look at the previous videos. Uh, we're going to look at uh, defocus blur, well actually sorry, positional camera and then defocus blur which is depth of field and then look at the, the final sort of scene. So uh, we've already built a, um, a camera class, this is what we rendered last time. The camera class kind of hard codes the, if we look at our main program here, kind of hard codes the, uh, the, the position of the camera. So here we've got uh, the camera being created, if we look at the camera class at the moment defines the, the lower left, the horizontal, the vertical, and the origin. Uh, and then it also defines how to get a ray there too. But, uh, and so this get ray is basically just going to be using those hard-coded co uh, coordinates. So what we're gonna do is make that camera more flexible and we're gonna make that able to move around so we can instantiate the camera in a different location. We're also going to introduce the concept of field of view. Uh, and you'll see that that allows us to kind of effectively look at or zoom into the scene. Uh, it'll have that effect anyway. Uh, and so then what we'll do after that, after we've built that, is render, a, render our scene from a few different angles. So if you look at what we rendered last time, we've got those, those three different materials sitting there as three spheres. What we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll move that camera around and just re-render and sort of see what that looks like. We'll zoom in. And then the next bit will be effectively building a lens, or at least making the lens able to do things like uh, have different effects based on the size of the aperture. Uh, and so this will be something that will give us depth of field, and we'll go through that as well. And then when we finish that, that's kind of functionally the, the ray tracer complete. And then the last bit is just building this scene, this beautiful scene that we'll, uh, we'll try and get to and render. So let's start with the camera. I got a bit of work ahead of us. So what we'll do is uh, we're going to, uh, well, firstly, uh, let's have a quick look. We're gonna allow an, an adjustable field of view. So this is the angle that you'll see through the portal. Uh, gonna use a, a vertical field of view in radians or degrees and, move, and change it to radians. I'll keep the first ray coming from the origin first ray is coming from the origin and heading to, heading to the uh, the z equals minus one plane. We could make it minus two or whatever as long as we make h a ratio to that distance. So remember z is into, I think it was into the, um, the screen and uh, we've got y and x height is, is the h theta. So anyway, so what we'll do is we're going to, uh, to implement height which is tan of theta on two. Uh, and then we're going to call the camera with a 90 degree field of view, uh, that ratio, which is the width over the height with those spheres. And we should see something like this. Okay, so uh, so let's, let's build that, I guess. So let's go ahead and implement the camera differently. So the camera still has the same members in it, uh, it now the constructor now takes a field of view and an aspect uh, we have to build a whole bunch of stuff here and then we set we basically still construct the camera so let's go and do that uh, we don't need to change the class per se or in our case the, the struct but what we're going to do is implement field of view this way so it's float32 aspect which will be float32 as well uh, and then before we build the camera what we're gonna do is let theta, theta equal the field of view times by whatever pi is. Now, how do I get pi? Uh, Rust pi, it's like standard, okay. So we should be able to just do standard float32 consts pi, I guess. and then divided by 180. Okay, so that will convert it into radians. 
where um, where every every 180 degrees is is the same as pi radians. So that should give us theta, and then what we need is let half of half of height equal. Now, how do we do tan? I guess let's just try doing theta on two. Um, do I just get a tan method? I, I wouldn't get a tan method. So how do I get rust tan? So tan is going to be uh, theta on two. So theta is float ah, divided by two. Um, what's going on here? Oh yeah, I do. I get tan. Cool. All right. So that that should get us half height. Okay, and then what we need is half width, which is equal to aspect times by half the height. And then lower corner there becomes half the width. half the height uh, minus one and then horizontal becomes two times half the width and then vertical becomes two times half the height this needs to be needs to be that and then the last origin, origin starts at zero, zero, zero again, still. Okay, so that's, that's theta. Okay, so what's half the height? Theta divided by two. Z equals minus one plane heading to the Z equals so maybe Z was positive out and it was negative into the into the screen um, anyway and so H is equal to half of theta tan tan of half of theta width was aspect times half the height Theta was field of view times by pi over 180 hmm. degrees. So there's two pi radians in a in a circle, right? So so. All right, so we've got this, and now get ray is going to be the same thing, is it? So it's still, still all the same. Yep, looks to be. And now we need we need to call camera differently. Uh, so what we do is looks like we build something called R, which is going to be uh, what was it? Standard float thirty two consts pi. Was it? Consts pi uh, divided by four. It's going to be cos of that. Cos. Why can't I just do cos like that? Because that's not a float. Awesome. So that should be right. And then what do we need? Oh, we're going to build two. I don't really want to build that. I guess we can, just for argument's sake. Mm. 
Okay, so we're going to have a, a plane where we're looking from, which is kind of the, the lens, I guess, and then uh, a point we're looking at, and that will be represented by a vector. Uh, so we specify an up vector for the camera, and V and U are in the plane. We can use any vec up vector we want and simply project it onto this plane to get an up vector for the camera. I use the common convention of naming a view up vector couple, uh, a couple of cross products and now we have a complete orth orthonormal basis UVW to describe our camera's position. Remember that V up, V and W are all in the same plane. V up, V and W are all in the same plane. Note that, like before when we fixed our camera faced minus Z, Z, our arbitrary view camera faces minus W and in Keep in mind that we can, but we don't have to use the world 0, 1, 0 to specify V up. I guess that's that makes it more that makes it obvious, right? From a from a um, just you know three dimensional coordinate system where Y is you know pointing up. This is convenient. We'll keep and we'll naturally keep your camera horizontal, right? Okay. Okay. So we need to build a cross product method as well. Well, yeah, it'll be a method on VEC. Actually, it'll be just a function, won't it? And we pass in two VECs. Okay. So let's not get... Okay. All right. So I'm not going to do this. Um, I'm going to leave it like that for now. We, we'll, we'll skip this bit. I'm not too interested in doing this bit. So what I'll do is is we'll, we'll keep going with the camera the camera uh, uh, constructor here. Uh, so what we're going to do is build a U and that's just going to be a, a default vector. Um, and then we'll do the same thing for V and W. Okay. And then what we need apparently is an origin. So let origin equal look from, which we need to pass in. Okay. All right. So look from is going to be a vec three, and then we'll have a look at, which is vec three. And we'll still have field of view. Oh, we need a, a V up, which is a VEC3 as well. I might just um, do underscores here. Okay, so this will be origin is look from. Makes sense. Then W, so these are all mutable. W becomes the unit vector which is look from minus look at right makes sense look from minus look at and then u becomes the unit vector of a cross product. So this will be cross uh, V up and W, which we haven't implemented yet. So we'll have to go and do that. And V is equal to uh, the cross product of W and okay. So V up and W is pointing, it's pointing up. And then V is going to be pointing that way. And so V and W, because they're the two cross products, will be in the same plane. Makes sense. Okay. And that's, and W is, okay, look from minus look at. Okay. Look from minus look at. All oh, right, okay. Yep. I think I get it. 
from a geometry point of view. All right, so now what we need to do is go and build a cross product. Uh, but before we do that, uh, what is origin now? Well, we already have origin, so that's pretty straightforward. So we just need that. Vertical though becomes two times half the height times by V. Horizontal is the same. Times by U. Okay. And then lower left corner becomes, uh, okay, what's it? What is it? Origin minus half width times by u minus half height times by v minus w. Interesting. Okay. Ah. That's wrong. All right. So we just need this cross product now and we should get everything else working. Unless I've made a mistake here. Yes. Rust gives you some really nice compiler errors, doesn't it? I really like it. Okay. Okay. A reference to that thing. Now, Cross products are a little bit more interesting to implement. So let's have a look at how they've done it. So if you've got two vectors and you want the cross product, so if you think about it, you've got you know two vectors in a plane, the cross product is basically perpendicular to that. Um, and so what you end up doing is, let's go and have a look here in vec. So we'll need a, uh, hmm. Implement here, pub, cross. So it's this thing. Uh, except you'll get a vector out. Then what you do is you build a brand new vec uh, where the first element. So you get v1 e1 times v2 e2 minus v1 e2. Okay. So we'll do v1 e1 times by v2 e2. Minus v, v1 e2 times by v2 e1. This is basically two. Uh, zero, zero, two. Uh, this is zero. This is one. This is one. This is zero. Okay, so this should be our cross product. Now let's have a look. So V1s, V2s, V1s, V2s. Looks pretty good to me. All right, so if we go back to the camera, um, we want references. It's a vector. Oh, sorry, a, a reference. And we're we're off and we're running. 
And so when we call camera now, we need to pass in everything on the constructor, which is going to be a whole bunch of new vectors. Zero, minus one. Okay, and what else do we need? Yet another vector. So one, zero, a 90 degree field of view. And then we do NX as float. Uh, so what's ours? Is it just width? Um, divided by height. All right. I think that should be right. So now we've got, uh, we're passing in for camera, we need uh, where we're looking from, um, where we're looking to, or at, uh, the vector that represents up, so that's just basically um, x is zero and, and z is zero, and we're, it's a unit vector up, up uh, pointing in y direction. The field of view is 90 degrees, and then uh, the aspect is width divided by height. So let's see what we get. If we've done all of that right, we should get something. Um, let's see if we can build this. Whoa, definitely squashed that. That's a cool looking bug. <laughs> We're squeezing something out and squashing it together. All right, we've made another bug. Oops. Let's have a look at that. So let's check. What have we built? We've built the, the camera the right way. Looks like it. Um, that looks fine, doesn't it? Okay. Now VEC. Let's just check the VEC. So our vec class implements cross. Okay, we return a vec. Um, what did I do? I had all this wrong. So it pays to pay attention. So that was wrong. <laughs> I'd say that's all it is. Um, so we we're doing, we we're completely mangling our cross product. So let's just try running again, see if that fixed it. That looks a lot, a lot better, doesn't it? That's pretty cute, isn't it? So we're basically building a, um, a, a camera that can move around. Uh, we seem to be a lot higher up in the scene. And so if you go back to main, let's see if we can make sense of that. Um, so X, Y, and Z. So we're actually starting sort of two units high. Um, I guess if we were to go down to the, go down to, uh, to zero there. That'll bring us back down to the ground, so let's see what that does. Yep, so that sort of makes sense, doesn't it? That's a really interesting effect, isn't it? Around the edge of that sphere, how bizarre. Um, and then we could go really high up, which is kind of pointless, but let's play around with it. But I mean, this is part of the fun of programming this stuff. <laughs> Where it's like the aerial view directly above, above our three spheres there. Um, and if we went back to just putting it at two, um, now remember that 
uh, x is, represents kind of where we are on the on the x-plane. Sorry, uh, minus two here represents where we are on the x-plane. So, you know, if we, if we just re-render this, right, get back to what we, we should have, which is what the, the reference expected. And then if we move that further left, um, just two more, let's say. Should sort of be looking at it yeah more yeah so we can see the cameras sort of swung around which is pretty nice that'll make sense um, and, and I like all that uh, so anyway let's uh, let's play with the field of view so I'll just I'll take it back to where it was and we'll make the field of view um, like 30 degrees okay so that's um that's a it's a much narrower uh, field of view uh, and I, I expect we should get something that looks a lot more zoomed but we'll see Let's see what that looks like yeah cool that looks that looks sweet and look at the look at the effect there on the glass sphere that's just stunning yeah it's really beautiful so this is I love this just getting that feedback loop um, now if we go back to um, work out which browser I'm in. Uh, if we go back to what we were meant to have um, just drawn with our positionable camera, uh, looks like we could be maybe even just go in even further. So let's look at what 25, uh, sorry, 20 looks like. And we'll try and make it look as close to this as possible. Yeah, it's pretty close. Pretty close indeed. And let's render that at a higher res just for fun. So let's do eight by four again. And that'll take a little while to render because it's uh, it's doing many, many, many more pixels. Okay. And so this is kind of gonna start looking pretty nice. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Sweet, awesome. Okay, all right. So we've got our we've got our camera done now. Um, now we want to work on uh, depth of field. Uh, okay. So the reason we defocus blur in real cameras is because they need a big hole. That's the aperture, uh, and that's what is used to let light into to to the lens, or sorry, to the um to the thing that's capturing the image, rather the film or the the, you know, in a modern camera, it's typically like a, a CMOS sensor or something like that. Um, but if we stick a lens in the hole, there will be a certain distance where everything's in focus, right? So this is the focus plane, the lens, and the film. So this is the camera on the left-hand side. Uh, and then if you move the film in and out, you'll get to a point where the lens is focusing that light. Makes sense. And this is the focus plane. And so you can see if you're moving the, um, the lens around, that will change the focus. Okay, so the distance to that plane where you are in focus is controlled by the distance. Yeah, sorry, yeah, it changes, changes the focus. Um, that, and so that is why you see a lens move relative to the camera when you change what is in focus. The aperture is a hole that controls how big the lens is effectively. For a real camera, if you need more light, you make the aperture bigger, and that will give you more depth of field um, effect. Uh, for our virtual camera, we can have a perfect sensor that will never need more light. So we only have an aperture when we want to defocus blur. A real camera has a compound lens that's complicated for our code. We just simulate it like this. But actually what they do is, because we're able to capture the, the image directly at the lens, effectively they pull out this part. We don't need the inside of the camera. We don't need to pretend to, we don't need any of that. Um, we don't need to simulate any of that. Okay. Um, anyway, and so the virtual film plane at the focus plane, and that's the lens. Okay. So what does he say? For the purpose of rendering an image outside of the camera, that would be unnecessary. Instead, I usually start rays from the surface of the lens and send them towards the, the film plane, the virtual film plane, by finding the projection of the film on the plane that is in focus. 
projection of the film on the plane that is in focus. Okay. So for that we need to have ray origins be on the disk around. So we need to so in, in the past we just had a single point where we're generating the rays, and in this case we're going to simulate the different sizes of the aperture by uh, by by sampling or sorry by by shooting rays from different parts on that um, on that disk, which is just a perfectly thin disk representing the lens. Um, and so we'll change the look from which makes sense. Okay. So let's let's play around with this. Um, so it looks like we have so if we go back to our camera class, we, we implement a couple of extra things here. Uh, we had, oops, wrong one. So what did we have? We, we were building aspect, but we now we need two more things. We need a, an aperture, which is going to be a flow as well. And we need a focus distance, which is also flow. Okay. Now the lens radius is going to be half the aperture, um, and we keep everything else the same by the looks. Um, but when we build this thing, so the lower left corner changes now. The lower left corner was origin minus half width times u minus half height minus w. Okay. But now, origin minus so times the focus distance. Okay, times by u. Half the height times by focus distance. Uh, and then minus focus distance times by w. And then we need focus distance in here as well. So focus distance was, I guess, the distance from the lens to to the virtual film plane, wasn't it? Hang on a second. I and send them towards a virtual by finding the projection of the film on the plane that is in focus at the distance focus distance. Yeah. Need to have a think about exactly what that's doing, um, but we'll, we'll continue. So we need to times everything by the focus distance. Focus distance. Now the origin stays the same, I guess. Um, now get ray will change. Because get ray is gonna, we're gonna shoot it from a different location, and we're gonna do, we're gonna basically work out what an offset is by finding a random point in a unit disk, um, and so we've got something called random in I think unit sphere. We don't have something called random in unit disk, uh, but we'll just put it in here because I think it belongs with the camera. So what we'll do is build uh, just a public function, well private to to this module actually. So it'll be called random in unit disk and I guess it will return 
a, a VEC3. Where is it defined? Let's see. Oh, okay. So I missed that. Anyway, let's build the, build that. So it returns a VEC3. Uh, and then inside of that, we do let P equal VEC3 default. And then we have while, I will just do a loop. Mutable. We'll say p is equal to two times by vec three, which is now we need random numbers again. We don't have rand in here. Last time we did that, we built it in here. So I'll just be lazy, pull it from material. Uh, from memory, we were yeah. This is what we want. And then it was just something like this. So what we're going to do in the unit disk is actually, I wonder if we can, is there a way we can just call rand? Ah, we'll just do it like this. We're just going to keep looping, uh, but if the dot product of P and P is greater than equal to one, we keep looping. So if it's less than one, we break out. So I guess we'll just do this. If uh, vec three dot of P and P is less than zero and return p. Cool. So this should do exactly what this loop does. Okay, so we're just going to basically build a, a random vector in x and y um, and subtract it from vector that's 1, 1, and we times it by 2. Okay. Um, and the dot product, so while the dot product of P and P is greater than or equal to 1, radius needs to be defined uh, hmm. right okay so so I've made a mistake here. So what we need is um, we need a lens radius member, which is a float. Uh, and then we need all these vectors. So we need u, v, and w. And so Hmm. 
Okay. Hmm. Let's just do this. So we'll do lens, U, V, and W. Okay. So that should keep that happy. Using that shorthand for uh, initializing the struct. I think that should be okay. And then we'll try a, a big vector. Oh, sorry, a, a big aperture. So we'll do, before we create the, um, okay. So what we're gonna do is say, let uh, look from equal this new vector um, and look, f look at, it's gonna be zero. And then minus one, so minus one. Uh, then what we do is have uh, a disk to focus, which is going to be um, basically the look look from minus look at uh, the length of that. Just start with a aperture of two, and then what we can do is build all of that into here. Okay, so camera needs aperture and focus distance, so we'll just add that, uh, which is literally. Aperture and disk to focus. Okay, and then um, we need to modify all of this. So we still do V up as that, and then we have look from and look at. All right, so look from, look at, up 20. Uh, is going to be the field of view and then we're going to have width divided by height which is our aspect ratio aperture is going to be two disk to focus is going to be this thing and it looks reasonably okay okay cool well let's see what this generates and see how many bugs we've made So we should get something that looks really blurry. So let's have a look at that. Let's see if it's finished. Yep. Okay. Hmm, we didn't get the blur, did we? Okay. Making mistakes. So all this looks fine. So I'd say it's the implementation of what we've put into camera. Look from, look at, da 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 da. Camera is this. Uh, this never gets mutated. Apparently. Oh, goodness. Really? Don't need any of that? Okay. Random unit in disk never gets used because we never actually used it. <laughs> oh, far out. All right. Uh, so we need to go back and work out what, where unit in disk was being used. So it's in get ray. Um, okay. So what we missed, uh, what I missed was, was implementing, well, using random in unit disk to start building that, uh, uh, you know, look at from different locations. Anyway, uh, and so what we need is this idea of a sort of this random random uh, point to start at. So it'll be the lens radius. Um, it'll be self 
dot lens radius uh, times by a random unit in disk. And then we'll need an offset, which is going to be uh, u times by rd dot x. Hang on a second, what's rd? It's a ray. Hang on a second, is it a ray? No. Lens radius times random unit in disk. Why don't I have x? Well, anyway, let's see. Uh, plus v times rd dot y. Okay. Looks like I do have it. And then return ray. So the so ray is going to be the origin plus the offset. And um, we need. So lower left corner plus uh, u times self horizontal. Yep, horizontal t times that minus the origin and then minus the offset. Okay, that looks better. Ah, hang on a second. Expected struct found that. Overloaded something. So U and V. Um, that's a bit unfortunate. Let me um, let me rename this to follow what they've done. So we'll do S and T. Uh, then this becomes self dot U and self dot V. Uh, offset stays the same, and then this becomes S, and that becomes T. That's better. All right, so that should should work. Okay, very cool. So let's try running that again now that we've actually implemented the uh, the offset. Got my T here. In fact, um, a whole pot of tea. So perfect for waiting for renders to finish. I've totally buggered something up. Hmm. What have I done here? So RD is that, offset is that, get ray, random in your disk. It's like random in unit disk is never finishing, so I've screwed that up. So let's go and have a look at how I implemented that. Random in unit disk, where is it? In the camera class. Random in unit disk. Okay, so loop p is equal to two times this vector. Um, okay. And it keeps looping while the dot product is greater than or equal to zero. So if the dot product is less, oh god, less than one. <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's uh, an interesting bug to introduce, isn't it? We'll see what that introduces. Pretty cool. All right, so we've got our um, sort of got what we expected. Um, it looks quite similar, doesn't it? I think you'll agree, which is rather rather neat. Okay, so now we've we've kind of we've kind of feature complete. 
right? So there's actually nothing else I don't think that we're, ne we're gonna implement into the ray tracer from a functionality point of view. Um, but what we are gonna do is build this new scene. Uh, and so we basically get, are gonna well, you know, very dramatically change the way that we're building this. Uh, I'm not gonna do I'm not going to build a new f a new me a new function for this. I'm just going to do it inside of the main for now. Uh, and we've already got a way of building. We've already got a list and a vector of hittables, and we should be able to just reuse that same concept in here. Um, but what we're going to have is still all the same same sort of initialized variables at the top. N is five hundred. What is N doing? Okay, well, we don't care about that because we're just going to use a vector and push onto it. Um, okay, so uh, I guess what we can start doing is... I mean, I, I don't know what camera it wants to use. But I guess let's leave the camera as it is. Um, I don't think any of this will change. That just still writes out the uh, the PPM file. And so I think all we're going to change is pretty much just the, the world set up here. And it's going to generate a whole bunch of random, random um, spheres, which should be quite fun. So let's go and let's go and do that. So I'll, I'll pull this back up to the top because it looks like we'll need random. Uh, we'll just pull that up there. Now let's set up the world. And so here we're going to have, we're going to use this incredibly good looking syntax. So we're going to have, uh, the first one will be a sphere. It's going to be a big one. So I guess that's going to be our, our sort of earth. It's going to be a thousand in radius. It's going to be a Lambertian. Lambertian. It's going to be uh, 0 0.5, 0.5.5. Um, okay, I'll try and be a little bit more careful here so we don't introduce bugs unnecessarily. All right. Okay, now uh, what else do we need? So we've, we've got a loop. So for something in minus 11 to 11, uh, well actually, and then do we use A and B? Yes, okay. For A and then for B in minus 11 to 11. Okay, then what we're going to do is say let choose material equal random double. Awesome. Which is going to be this. Okay. So choose material will be a number between 0 and 1. Then we're going to have, going to build something called center. So let center equal, use American spelling, let center equal this new vector, which is going to be a plus 0 0.9 times by this random double thing, 0 0.2, and then b plus 0 0.9 times by this random double thing. Okay, that's an interesting looking. Ah, this has to be a float, I guess, as float 32, so does B. Um, okay. So that gets us something called center. All right, and then what we do is we say if the, um, if center, 
minus vec3, uh, what is it, 4, 0 0.2, and 0, 0.0. If, uh, if that, the length of that, is greater than 0 0.9, then do this thing. Okay. Fascinating. So we'll do that, and then there's a bunch of spheres we put at the bottom, so we'll jump ahead and do that. Three, I think. Yep. Okay. So let's just, I'm, I'm sort of jumping down to the bottom here, so we'll just go and build that out. Um, so this will be zero, uh, one, zero, okay, and then one radius, and it's gonna be a dielectric, which means that it only has a, a refractive, excuse me, a refractive index. Okay, so that should be the first one. The second one's Lambertian. Okay, so that one's from minus 0.4, or minus, Sorry, minus four. Um, and that's one and zero. It's one in radius. It's a Lambertian. And it's uh, point 0.4 times point 0.2 times point 0.1. Cool. And then. Is that right? Yep. And then the next one is going to be a metal. That's interesting. So this one goes from 4.0 to 1 to 0. Okay, it's 1 in radius. And then it's a metal, which, as we know, requires uh, an albedo plus something, fuzz. So where were we? It's 0 0.7, 0 0.6. You'd imagine, you can imagine wanting to build an editor to build this stuff, can't you? And 0, 0.0, okay. So that's the end of our, that's the last three. Uh, we can kind of kill this stuff. Whoops, can kill all of this. Don't need it anymore. Um, I mean, we still want let the world. We still want to set up the world, <laughs> and we still want to set up the camera. Okay. So anyway, so now we're going to go and build this thing, which looks like it just sort of randomly goes and builds these small spheres. All right. So this is a this is a massive sphere, um, radius of a thousand. This is, these are the, these are sort of medium, well, so I guess what this is saying is the thousand will be the big one that everything sits on. Um, the, these will be um, the spheres, the three spheres here. So we'll have a dielectric at the back, we'll have a lamb, oh, sorry, a lambertian at the back, a dielectric in the middle, and then uh, metal in the front. Which sort of makes sense, right? So you've got, you know, four is 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 coming out. Um, Lambertian's minus four, and this is in the middle. So the origin is kind of a, about this, um, about this dielectric. So it's sort of in the middle there. Uh, anyway, and so then the rest of these are going to be. There's going to be quite a few of them, isn't there? So minus eleven to eleven. Well, that's what this was about. So we're going to have five hundred of these other smaller balls are hanging around. Is that right? Hmm. Oh well, well, we'll work it out. Okay, so uh, let's do it. So if the center is this thing, okay, well it won't draw all of them, will it? And that's what this is going to be doing. So it's not going to draw all of them. Anyway, uh, so we'll do if choose mat 
is less than 0.8, then we'll do do diffuse uh, if else if choose mat is less than 0 0.95, then we'll do metal, uh, and then else uh, we'll do glass. Okay, so here what we're doing is we'll create new spheres, push them, and so they are diffuse ones, so Lam Lambertians, so we'll steal one of these as an example um, and we'll so these are all going to be random hmm it's pretty cool So it's going to be center, 0 0.2, and then we want just three of these random numbers. Pretty neat. Oh, that wasn't so clever. something like that. Okay, get rid of this, more screen space. All right, so this, uh, that just sets up a, oh, it's, it's random times random. Okay, random squared. That looks better. All right, um, and so that will just push these little spheres uh, that are completely random in every respect onto uh, onto our onto our world list, and then we'll do the same thing for um, okay. We'll do the same thing for metal, pretty much. So except these will be metals, obviously. So we'll do metal here. Now, this is more interesting. So here it's 0 0.5 times by one plus the, um, oh my God. So yeah, all right, I'll just clean this up. So it's slightly different. Okay. So in this case, we've got um, the material metal, the albedo is this, and then uh, we need Thank goodness for syntax rejiggeries. All right. Okay. Ah, that's fuzz is 0.5 as well. 0.5 times by some random number. Okay. Uh, and then otherwise, glass looks a lot more simple. It's basically. going to be dielectric, in which case we need a refractive index, and that's just going to be 1.5. Nice. Simple. OK. 
Cool. So that looks like our entire world constructed. And so what we're doing is we're creating this big one um, that looks about right. We'll just quickly check that. And then we're looping Yeah, so they're not creating 500 anyway, they're just creating 100. Oh no, 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 they're doing 400, okay. Anyway, and then we do, okay, so then we've got uh, this, uh, let's just render it and see what it does. We can, we can debug it if we get it wrong. Okay, so this might take a while to render because um, there's so many more objects and intersections and reflections and all sorts of cool things going on. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty neat. Um, we, could, we could also make so what we're also doing, right, remember we, I'm rendering it at a higher resolution and then we, we're still doing 100 samples. Uh, so that is, um, that's going to slow this down, right? So if you think about it, um, 800 times by 400 is 1200, uh, what's that, 12,000. Um, why can't I do maths on, on 120,000? <laughs> All right, 800 times by 400. Hang on. Um, yeah, far out. 800 times by 400 is 3,200. And then we're doing a 100 samples. Um, and then when we call color here, we're doing 50 up to 50 so I mean worst case we could be doing 1.6 billion iterations to draw this thing out wow okay maybe I should have gone for you know what I can do I'm gonna go smaller again Um, and I'll do fewer samples, so I'll just do, uh, I don't know, let's do 10 samples or something. That should get us back to something that will give us a res like a, an actual render in a time frame we can use. But um, that's, about, that's pretty much it, right? We've, we've pretty much finished this, this initial tutorial. Let's have a look at what it drew for us. Oh my God, it looks terrible. <laughs> okay. That's why we want to render it at, so we've got our, I've got the camera set up wrong, I guess. Um, where was the camera going to be set? So that definitely looks like the camera set up wrong. With a huge depth of field. So let's have a look at what the camera's supposed to be. Uh, does it actually specify? So it talks about using a big aperture. Um, I think we want to go back to what our original looked like, probably. I, I actually don't know. Hmm. We'll do ninety. Uh, we'll do this. Uh, look at can be can be that. Uh, look from can be minus two, two and one. Uh, aperture. Who knows? Just leave it at two. Let's 
gives us that short gives us that if you know actually how to build a camera Still doesn't look right, does it? Okay. I feel like I'm missing something stupid here, like a setting that it's documented that I can't see. This is the scene that it's setting up. But where's the camera setting that we're meant to use? Hmm. All right, let me uh, let me cheat for a sec. Have a look at the latest version of the doc. So they talk about a camera there, but not here. That's really helpful. <laughs> not. Um, so maybe the documentation here is missing a camera, unless I've totally missed something, uh, which is possible. Very possible. All right, let's just um, look. We'll take the values from this then. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we'll do um, look from is going to be um, so it's going to be 13 uh, 2 and 3 and we're going to do 0, 0, 0 so we're looking directly at the origin um, and then distance to focus looks correct Hang on a second, distance to focus is only 10, sure. And then aperture is only 0.1, which makes sense because we're total blurry land. Um, and V up, let V up equal. This is V up. And we only need 20 there, apparently. Um, aperture distance to focus is 10. Gee, that's so different. All right, let's, let's try that. Interesting, that documentation doesn't look complete or if I've done something stupid. Let's see what it's uh, see what it's drawn for us now. Wow, okay, that's cool. All right, that looks right, doesn't it, from a geometry point of view. That looks a lot better anyway. Um, I think that looks looks quite quite right. Okay, so so let's go back and do uh, well, let's just play with the samples value and just see what what effect it has. Now remember samples at the bottom here was um, it was just the number of times that we were um, we were generating u and v separately.
Oh, very cool. Yeah. Okay. I forgot about that. So we're building like um, U and V is the coordinate from the, the plane that we're basically going to draw the ray from into the world when we color it. And so you can just sort of see just changing that from 10 to 100 is slowing this down by a, a large factor, well, 10 times. Um, so anyway, we'll see what that what that renders for us at a low resolution. And it should look a lot less noisy and grainy. So let's see what we get when that finishes. So it should be a similar looking scene, just a little bit cleaner, which is looking pretty nice. Again, still pretty low resolution, but hey, hey, how cool is that? We did it, we did it guys, so we've, we've got it going, we've got it finished pretty much. <coughs> and if we compare it back to, to the previous version, oh sorry, the version that they've given us, the reference version. So the, the, random, the randomization is in the smaller spheres here. Right? Um, and that's pretty, um, that's pretty obvious, right? So that we set up the, the, the main sphere at the bottom and these three spheres statically, and then these other ones get uh, generated randomly here, which is what we were, what we were seeing there. Um, and if we wanted to, we could kick this off at a much, much higher resolution. Um, and I won't, um, but, but I have done. And so that's the kind of res that, you know, I mentioned last time, this is the kind of resolution that you can get. Um, and this was 1600 by 800. And so, you know, you're really kind of starting to get some cool effects um, by, by doing that. I mean, just look at all the detail you're getting here. So, wow. All right. Uh, pretty happy with that. So that was good. And, I, you know, debugging this uh, live is always fun. Um, and so we're, we're done. Okay. We've, we've done this. So let's, let's just have a look. We've, we've been through this entire tutorial. Uh, We've learned how to build a, an image. We've built a, a Vect3 class, rays, a camera, spheres, normal maps. Uh, we, remember we colored that using RGB. We, we built normal maps to look at the, 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 the curvature. Um, we, we've done anti-aliasing. We've done diffuse materials, metals, dielectrics, the whole bit. Uh, and now we, we even have defocus blur or depth of field. Uh, so that's, that's it. Um, this is kind of, I feel like, just something that we could we could build on top of, right? So they, they even say at the end here, now you've got a ray tracer, what do you want to do? Lights, uh, triangles, textures, volumes, media, make it go faster. So, you know, I'll, I'll just before I finish, uh, I'll, I'll kick this off at a, at a higher res. Um, any, any sort of interesting resolution that gives you a nice effect is going to be, it's going to be super slow. Um, if I kick this off, it's probably going to take several minutes to just to run it um, because we're making it just orders of magnitude um, slower. Um, there's way more pixels to, to draw and uh, to calculate. Um, so you could parallelize this, and I might try doing that with um, some simple simple threading in, in Rust. So I think what I, uh, what I want to do with this next, and I might do a separate video, um, is I want to get to a point where I can characterize the performance of this thing. So I'm going to probably use flame graphs to do that, and I'll show where the code is spending most of the time. Uh, we'll probably flesh out some of the, the unit tests and the benchmarks. I'll probably do that offline. That's not interesting to see. Um, and then once we get a bit of an idea of what's happening in the program by profiling with flame graphs, I might then start thinking about how do I break it down into um, a parallel approach. And so I might just start with my own sort of naive threading. I've got you know 16 cores on this machine that are hyper-threaded, so I could do 16, 16 threads at least. Uh, try try that, see what sort of speed up we get. And then I could do something with maybe a thread pool. And then I could just try something like Rayon, the Rayon library, which is um, which is amazing and does a work stealing uh, scheduler in a thread pool. Um, so it's going to be way faster than anything I would want to build. Uh, and I think other other people have done this with Rayon as well. But I'd probably like to step through it as just uh, you know to learn as I go and do this do this myself with my own threading. Um, and so that's probably something that I'll, I'll do next. I might do another video on that. Uh, and um, who knows? So look, that's the end of the series. Effectively, there'll probably be one or two more videos on this as I play around with this thing. Uh, and uh, look, we're still running, so I'm not going to show you that. But go to my GitHub repository where I've 
put a final render. Um, all of the code is in here as well. Uh, you can refer to the videos. Um, please tell me if you enjoyed the series and you want to see more of this sort of stuff. Uh, I probably keep working on this stuff, but if you want to see it on YouTube, let me know. And um, thanks heaps for, for joining, and I hope to see you in another series. Thanks.